If we look back at the Banking Royal Commission, um, that really opened the door for companies to come in and do things better than the banks. What will the future of banking mean for you? Understand how Australian fintech startups are disrupting the financial services sector on this episode of Tomorrow's Tech. Hi there, I'm Sam, and today we welcome on the show Simone Joyce. Simone is the co-founder and CEO of Paper Plane, a payment software company uniquely linking businesses, banks, and payers together. Passionate about the future of banking, she's also the chair of FinTech Australia. Welcome on the show, Simone. Thank you, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. Simone, what differentiates FinTech industries from other innovative industries? Look, we've seen a lot of attention for fintechs recently in Australia, thanks to companies like Afterpay, but the buy now, pay later sector is just one of multiple verticals in this space. So companies here range from uh, superannuation, lending, payments, which is my personal comfort zone, uh, and data companies and many more in between. It's fundamentally different from some other sectors of the startup space, simply because the financial industry is heavily regulated. Correct. And that regulation can throw up some high barriers to entry that uh, companies in other sectors might not face as a startup. Navigating those regulatory waters and uh, funding product build often means that fintechs raise more money at an early stage, often pre-live or pre-revenue and then go on to raise more money at higher valuations early, um, simply because navigating those regulatory waters means that the credentials and access granted innately reflect value back into that company. That's an interesting point. Now, Simone, what major factors have contributed to the growth of the fintech industry in Australia? We've had some real tailwinds behind the industry here. If we look back at the Banking Royal Commission, um, that really opened the door for companies to come in and do things better than the banks. Um, it really shone a spotlight on the financial and uh, banking industry and the problems that we're facing. Since then, we've seen an acceleration. Um, just last year, the CDR went live on July 1. Um, consumer data right is a legislative instrument that means that all data that you generate as a consumer in your bank account actually belongs to you um, and banks are now compelled to share that data with accredited third parties that you give access to. It started in banking but the CDR will extend to utilities and super as time goes on. You might have heard about open banking. Yes. Well that's CDR in action. Um, a supportive government is critical to the growth of this sector and in Australia CDR is just one of the, um, the instruments that the government's using. We have um, regulatory changes Changes, we have Senate inquiries, we have um, budgetary allowances to support the sector. Now on top of all of that, the population in Australia is fairly highly financially included and financially literate, and we're fairly open to adopting new financial technologies. Not quite as open as the UK. It's all relative. But we don't do too badly. So across the board, all of these factors point to the fact that we're going to see tremendous growth in this sector. That's excellent to hear. Now, how can we attract more global fintechs and further investment into the community for fintech in Australia? Look, I think we're on the pathway to becoming a globally recognised hub for fintech, and we can look to some unique attributes in Australia. Uh, first of all, we're geographically close to the ASEAN region, and that's quite attractive as a jumping point for companies from US or, or Europe, for example. Um, we have fintech bridges in place already with some other countries, including Singapore and the UK. Now, those bridges are intended to provide operational and set up support for sure. companies from each country to eat, enter each other's markets. So we can look to strengthen those bridges, maybe with free trade agreements, and also to establish similar bridges with other countries. What else do you suggest? Look, I think that we need to look at our regulatory framework. Other markets have recognised that uh, regulation that promote innovation and competition is vital. Yes. I'm not suggesting that we go ahead and change our regulation just to be like other markets, but we can look at things like our credential porting or cooperative data principles to make it easier for companies to enter the Australian market. Um, we need to then also look at our tax, our R&D, and our founder incentives to make sure that it makes financial sense for companies to come set up and stay here. Um, we won't be attracting globally active companies if those things aren't comparable um, and attractive. That's an important point. It is. And look, overall, I think that we are on the track to becoming a globally recognised hub, which means that we will see more global companies coming in and snowballing the value that fintechs represent for the economy. And Simone, I know you're passionate about this, but how can we foster a more successful relationship between banks and fintechs? The banking fintech relationship is an interesting and a really necessary beast. We're pretty unique in Australia uh, with our four 
big banks, both in the four pillar policy itself and the financial robustness of those banks. For us to thrive as a sector, we need to do two things simultaneously. Firstly, we need to actually work with the banks as suppliers and, and partners, but we also need to continually challenge the banks. Yes. And I think we're doing both of those things quite well. Um, Fintechs need to work with banks for a number of reasons. It could be to gain access to payment infrastructure. Banks are, gank, are gatekeepers for that here in Australia. It could be for a warehouse debt facility for a loan company. It could be as a CDR provider. Um, but we're increasingly seeing banks come back the other way and engage fintechs to fill their product or service gap. It's a good sign. Could be a payment services company. It could be a data company, KYC, all great things. But we need to get better at establishing and maintaining those relationships. It can be a slow death for a fintech if you're stuck in a traditional bank procurement cycle. Um, fintechs tend to work on weeks and, and months, not quarters and years like banks do. Um, and we also need to bring some transparency to a very opaque process. I don't think you could ask someone in a bank, what is the process to engaging with you guys um, and get a consistent answer. So transparency and understanding each other's expectations will be really beneficial for both parties. For sure. Look, in Australia, we're also seeing banks starting to invest in fintechs as well. Um, often one bank will invest, one company will have multiple banks as investors, and that's really positive for the ecosystem. However, there was some talk late last year um, where the ACCC was, was making noises about possibly moving to prevent banks from acquiring fintechs. And what was your to, perspective on this? Well, the, the ACCC wanted to protect competition, but look, if you have a look at the investment cycle of a fintech, the early, late and mid-stage investment would be severely affected if this happened. The ultimate exit is the goal for many um, investors. And IPO aside, there's not many more attractive exit opportunities than a bank acquiring you in Australia. So I think if that went ahead, it would actually serve to stifle competition as opposed to protecting it. I think that's some great points, Erin. Thank you very much for coming on tomorrow's Tech Simone and sharing your perspective. Pleasure. And to our viewers, if you enjoyed this episode or are passionate about fintech, follow us weekly across Tomorrow's Tech, LinkedIn, Facebook and Instagram. And let us know in the comments below what changes you'd like to see digitally as a banking customer. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining us and see you next time on Tomorrow's Tech. Tomorrow's Tech, presented by 3.digital.